Surfing Waco and a private session. Stick around and we'll tell you what to do and what not to do. If you haven't already, please click like and subscribe below to support the channel. So during our stay, our recent trip to Waco Surf, we have the really cool opportunity to do a private session with Daniel, Andrew, myself, and then a buddy that we met there, Pat. So we had four people, one hour. The possibilities were almost limitless. Um, you can choose basically from three different settings, the wedge wave, the air wave, or the grom comp, which is essentially the same wave as the public session. It just has longer intervals in between. Um, and we're going to give you a quick breakdown of our thoughts on each type of wave. Let's start with the wedge wave. The biggest thing was that these, like the wedge, nor normally if you're surfing like in the ocean and there's like a reef break or there's a double up or wedge, you kind of see it happening and it's, it kind of gurgles up and, you know, it bottoms out type of thing. At Waco, the wedge is coming towards you. So I think we took off a little bit too close to the shoulder and we're then we're trying to stall while all that water was draining out and the wedge was coming at you sideways. And so that makes it really difficult not to catch your, your front rail and go over, maybe try and take off a little bit deeper and then just race the section as opposed to what we did a little bit more on the shoulder, trying to stall. And that makes it, it makes it pretty difficult. But I mean, the, the wave was awesome. <laughs> So for our private session, we also hired a we Henson. hired Rob Henson, who's the staff uh, photographer, videographer, super awesome guy. D had some great photos for our public sessions. Got some killer video for our private session. And after it was all over, he um, just showed me some previews. And for the wedge in particular, he was <clears throat> pointing where we were taking off it was basically here, and where we needed to take off was like I don't know, maybe five to seven yards deeper. Overall, my thoughts on the wedge, I actually thought I was going to get worked on the left and own the right, and it was almost the exact opposite. <laughs> I did way better on the left, and every wave on the right, I fell on. Hey, you, didn't, you didn't make a single right. No, and I even got an extra wave once you stopped surfing, and I just couldn't. Every time I just put myself a little, I guess it was just too, yeah. too selfish. I got too deep, too greedy. And I got swallowed by that section and got slammed pretty good a couple times. Yeah. Joe, what was your take on the wedge? Oh, the wedge was great. It, yeah, it is tricky. I think I made one or two on my left. I had a more, a more difficult time on the left than the right. And the right is my forehand, so I had a more difficult time on my backhand. So I love the wave. It was so much fun. Uh, like Daniel was saying, it's a ton of fun love the wedge and like it was like a puzzle trying to figure out not only how to make the wave but how to make it uh and just be deeper we were told the pool can be shallow at times during public sessions but then for the private session and the wedge just how it's the water sucks up you're, you're like in maybe a foot of water a foot and a half of water if you fall in front of the wave so lucky for me on the left i i don't think i fell once um, I, I definitely <laughs> fell on the right. So I only I only did a couple. So much fun. So much fun. Um, I, I had a blast on that. Our big tip is just like take off deeper. Um, they their advice is like outrun the the very first one that you do, and then from there you know start going deeper. Yeah. which I think is good advice. But yeah, like go like a full. I would almost try and go almost too deep one time just so that you like. Yeah, you, you get know. that feeling. Yeah. Yeah, but I feel like everyone got at least one or two fun ones. Pat got a couple of great lefts. Yeah. Um, you got yeah, your, your board. Your board on the right got munched. Yeah. I mean, you'll see the clip, but it essentially it was that wave where I my nose just literally just caught and just dug, and it literally just went straight, straight into down. the concrete slab. Yeah. Oh, it was so fun. It was so fun. <clears> I <throat> I would definitely surf that if I could. Like, I would surf that for the full hour. Yeah, I love I love that way. Even yeah. on even though I only made like half of them, you know, like, <laughs> so fun, love it. So yeah, that was that was the wedge essentially. Uh, the air wave, which I also thought we would do really well on, I found it I found it hard. <laughs> I was hoping that I was going to do better on it. And if I was to say anything, I would say get to the section earlier. 
once again, you don't really see it. So you like, you pop up and you're just like on it. And then, you know, like a second or two seconds into the ride, you see that end section like pop up. And that one, it's, it's almost like that section's coming off of the wall more. So you project out and you can project out into the box more. Um, and I was, I think I was trying to be a little more conservative, but if you wait too long, the section gets to be a pretty fat section. So I think the, the best advice is to race it and get there early because waiting, I think I got there too late most of the time. Yeah. And so it's like, didn't hit it right. You know, what's funny is like, I had the opposite advice cause he told me, so I went first on the left air. So for the left air wave, um, he said, you want to get there as early as you can get there super early. Like as soon as you're up, like pedal to the metal, get there and then launch out. Um, and it'll be a soft landing. And so my very first wave, um, that's what I did. And I felt like I got there a little early, like too this, early. Yeah. Like this, the section could have been bigger. I, when I was paddling back out, I gave Daniel that advice. It's like, Hey Dan, like maybe don't try, maybe don't try and get there as early. Maybe slow it down a little bit. Uh, and then I know Daniel's first wave, he actually got a double, a double tap, which is unheard of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, got a double tap on the left air wave, which is pretty funny. Um, mm-hmm. and you could like, if we, if we had that wave over and over for a couple hours, I, I think we, we would be sticking a ton of airs. Um, but we were only, we, you know, we only did it for about 15 minutes and then we had to switch. Yeah. But, I think like, we had like three waves each. Or, yeah. I think that's what we had. Yeah. So. Yep. So I, like, I love, those are my favorite two waves out of the, the entire, um, trip. And it was so sick. Hey Dan, what advice did you have on the left? Andrew and I just gave completely opposite advice. I said, <laughs> get there later. Andrew said, get there later. Yeah. My time was too slow. Um, what, what's your advice? I feel like you weren't able to like unleash, like you were definitely surfing more conservative, but you still landed a solid backside air. My advice is both of yours combined. I thought the left air section was really dreamy i would yeah i wish we had more waves on that one because i did surf conservatively because i wanted to land a couple and get my feet under me the, yeah the wave itself on the left i i thought it was i thought that was dreamy the right air section i experienced exactly what you're saying Stevo. i was like oh i'll do the same thing like i can always pump you know i can always give it one or two quick pumps on the right and go and launch and I would find myself getting to the right, to the air section at the right. And it was like bigger from than where I was coming from. Hmm. And so I think maybe my last wave or two. Yeah. You, you got to race that one a lot more. At least I did. Um, uh-huh. You got to get there a lot earlier. Totally. To, to have a good, a good air section. I did not surf the, the right air. Well, yeah, I, I the hardest one. The right. That was, yeah, that was my hardest one. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't surf the right airway because my knee had been, my knee had pretty much given out by then. Um, so I have no advice to give, other than don't <laughs> hurt your knee, so you can surf the wave. If you could swing it, I would say do a second, do a second hour. I mean, I don't. I mean, I couldn't because I, you know, that's like above my budget. But that was so much fun. I would like to just do like airs <laughs> for one session and then barrels yeah. for, for another session. I guess we should sit, shout out like the third wave that we didn't choose, um, was like the competition wave and you know, the longer intervals between each waves, Rob, the photographer was telling me they do that for competition. That way everyone has the same wave in the same settings, but also they do it for video overall private, was incredible yeah. yeah like steve-o said if you can swing two hours do it if not i would probably say limit limit the amount of waves yeah and i guess so dan you just made me think of something you know th- this private session is you know 17 1800 dollars and you get it for an hour and every time they switch types of waves they let the pool settle it's not a ton of time it's maybe like 30 seconds to a minute but if you switch four times like we did, then you know, you're kind of losing time instead of just like picking one wave setting and sticking with that the you know the entire session. Yeah, it's like a minute. It's like a minute in between each at least each wedge wave. So yeah. it's like no no more than sixty waves. Like sixty waves is max. That's like if you do the same setting. 
yeah. So maybe stick with one or two, one preferably, but m- maybe two different settings, yeah. right? So yeah. wedge left, wedge right, or air section left, wedge left, or something like that. That yeah. way you get to figure out the wave more and you maximize your session more. I agree. A private session ran us um, almost $1,800. Granted, we had some credit that rolled into that, so out of pocket we only paid two hundred dollars. But ultimately, in some form or fashion, we paid you know between the four of us eighteen hundred bucks. Something to think about. <laughs> it breaks down to like, so if you have four people splitting up, you know, the session, you're basically getting fifteen waves, and each wave breaks down to like twenty six, twenty seven dollars a wave. So I literally spent a hundred dollars on like falling on every right wave just don't Super fall fun. don't fall next I do, time <laughs> i would do that again but i mean i literally spent a hundred dollars yeah. to just get like pounded into the concrete on the right wedge <laughs> and break my board if we were not getting additional credit and you were just going to pay for that out of pocket is it worth it daniel what are your thoughts it's tough because <laughs> yeah give me an answer what is it i mean ultimately i would because i pr- i'm probably not going to wake a lot so, um, I, I mean, the waves are awesome. I love it. It's more about the budget. It's yeah, like, yeah. you know, okay, you add some more people, but then you get less waves. So, um, I think ideal would be like two hours private and three or four people. So just, yeah, just I, to I circle back, your answer is yes, it's worth it out of pocket. It's, it's not, not worth it. It's a yes. It's totally worth it. <laughs> Steven, what, what's your, what's your take? Double negatives. Yeah. I mean, I think you got to do it at least once. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I would agree with you guys for all the same reasons, right? Like you're only going to be in Waco once ever, or maybe once in a long time. So yeah. to, to do and have that, to have that experience, I think it's totally worth it. Waco Cirque private session. Pricey? Yes. Is it worth it? Yes. Disagree? Leave us a comment below. Otherwise, find us out in the water. We'll see you next time.